Alright ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show and I'm here to talk about some, some NBA, talk about some NBA news, get this uh, video done here. So the first thing I want to talk about um, is Steve Kerr uh, after the USA uh, Basketball Showcase game today, their second one that they escaped with a win against Australia by six points. Uh, he was asked about the possibility of benching Joel Embiid, uh, he said, and quote, and I end I quote I'm going to continue continue experimenting with the lineup. Joel is getting better and better every day. I mean Staff kinda struggled today. I feel like he played pretty good. And the twenty point lead was cut to six as soon as he went out went to the bench. I mean, he he was the only starter with a plus, plus negative uh, or with a plus. Uh, what's that plus negative stat or what the fuck it is? Bam and AD had three turnovers each while also getting getting cooked on defense. Uh, Joel Embiid I thought played a great game. I don't know why they, why he's being asked about the possibility of benching Joel Embiid. Well, who let NBA Twitter into the media questions? But yeah, um, Steve Kerr shouldn't be the Team USA coach. He doesn't know when to freaking call a timeout. Like a team will go on a big run, it's like 10-2 or 12-2, and he's like, nope, no timeout. It's like... So Richard Jefferson, Dick Jefferson, uh, he gave his base starting five for Team USA via ESPN NBA. Put LeBron James, Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, NC Davis, and Joel Embiid. That is quite literally the worst possible starting lineup. There's literally no spacing. Your best lineup is probably Steph, Ant, KD, Braun, and AD, maybe. Or he'll just have AD out there. I mean, the audacity to not have Steph in the starting lineup. It's like, get these analysts off the air. You need space, like you can't just put all these players in the starting lineup and not have a a guard. So Mikael Bridges, he's expected to take a pay cut to stay with the New York Knicks. What the fuck is happening? I, what the? Oh my lord! My st my phone's staying in my hand. Um, end quote. Pause. Pause. Uh, league sources. Say the expectation now. Furthermore, is that Bridges is likely to follow Brunson's lead and sign a team-friendly deal on his own of his, of his own. When it's his turn to negotiate an extension, uh, he's eligible for a shorter and less attractive deal as soon as October first, or a four-year extension if he waits until after the season. That cements himself at MSG alongside his former Villanova teammates Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, and Dante Divincenco. So, um, the Knicks are dodging max contract like dodging bullets. One of the, that's probably the, this is probably the best run uh, front office in the association. Getting all these good players and then getting the team friendly deals like Jalen Brunson and Mikael Bridges, which he'll probably do. And it's the power of friendship. And it's not just, a, and people say, oh, it's not a pay cut. He, he's just. Getting what he's actually worth instead of an overpay. He's been one of the most pursued players in the league past few years. I don't think he's worth what he, what the value was, but hey, he was a pursued player. And he's a good player. Like he's just not a superstar, but it is a pay cut. This is a definition of a pay cut. I don't see how you can say it's not. So the Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls. They believe Zach, that, if, that Zach Levine is healthy and he'll help the team compete next season. Compete? When you got to cope, they're just coping. Because they can't trade him and no one wants to take his fucking contract. Like, no one wants to take his contract. I mean, 
they're just coping. They believe they'll believe oh he's healthy and he'll perform and we and we can get his trade value up. It's probably what the boys are thinking. What are you gonna compete? What are you gonna compete for? Tenth place? Like what is that what you're gonna compete for? Like tenth place in the east? Compete. Yo, he ain't gonna compete. This thing ain't good enough. This thing's barely good enough to be in the plan. Let alone compete. So, uh, Per Shames Trania on the Pat McAfee show, he said, Clay Thompson, he's gonna start at small forward at, at, for the Dallas Mavericks. <sighs> yeah, this dude's gonna start at the three. Opponents are probably be like barbecue chicken alert, barbecue chicken alert. My neck bone. <laughs> so normally that's what I do. Anytime I eat yams, collard greens, <laughs> mac and cheese, cornbread, these are great. That's gonna be opponents when they see Clay Thompson the three next year. This blood's starting at the three. They might be the worst defensive team in the league this season. Freaking Luca and Clay out there. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I had a lot of yawn out there. Um, so, per your report, uh, the Blazers want two first round picks from the Lakers in exchange for Jeremy Grant. I feel like someone out there would pay two first round picks for him. I, I don't think the, the Lakers could. But 20% of the cap is not all, at all awful for your third guy. But thirty million for a two-way athletic forward who can shoot forty percent from three is pretty good. I know he's putting up numbers on a bad team, but his numbers have increased after he got traded from playing as the first option. Like he's still playing good. And I wouldn't say his contract's that awful. It's actually decent considering what other people get. But two first-round picks that'd be interesting. So, per report, Eric Bledsoe, he's going to attempt an NBA comeback. Ugh. It's Taj Gibson's inspiring every vet now to come back. Eric, Eric Bledsoe comeback attempt in the big 2024. He, he, bro, he ain't going to make it back in the NBA. So, Killian Hayes, he's looking to return to the NBA. Oh, God. And the Brooklyn Lights plan to attend his workout. Per Eric Slater. Oh great, just what the Brooklyn Nets need. Another player that can't shoot. Adding Kelly Hayes <laughs> to Ben Simmons. Jesus Christ. This is a new low. Ben Simmons, Kelly Hayes <laughs> backcourt. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks they have are, are looking to acquire a shooting guard and, and have shown interest in Gary Trent Jr. Pirate Shams Charania. End quote. Milwaukee is also among several contenders pursuing the top free agent remaining. Gary Trent Jr. League sources say Trent, the 25-year-old who averaged 13.7 points per game on 39.3% three-point shooting for Toronto last season, is taking a patient approach to find the best opportunity for his, for his seventh NBA campaign. I would say this, this. I would say they absolutely need this move as Milwaukee. They have to bring in another shooter, and I feel like he would fit in perfectly because they really need another three-point shooter. I think Gary Trent would be that guy. For him, because he almost shoots 40% from three. Uh, Jerome Williams reveals he wanted to play for the Lakers during his prime. I wanted to play with Kobe. David Stern wasn't allowed it anyways. He would have vetoed it. Bronny James won the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 tournament that took place in Las Vegas in conjunction with the NBA Summer League. He received a custom made Call of Duty championship belt and a $10,000 prize. Well, at least he's making shots somewhere, am I right? So the Golden State Warriors, they are offering Moses Moody, multiple first round picks, multiple pick swaps, 
and multiple second round picks to the Utah Jazz in exchange for Lori Markkinen. For Lori Markkinen, per at Shams Terrania. Utah wants Modi, Jonathan Kaminga, and Brandon Pajemski along with picks. I mean, obviously, Utah's going to want a lot because Lori Markkinen is really good. But the Warriors, we're trying, we were just trying to pull a fast one on them. But obviously, it wasn't going to work. But, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I want to give all this up. I mean, I just don't know if I want to give up all this for Lori Markin. Lori Markin is a good player. But this doesn't sound like a Lori Markin package. The only players you're giving all that up for is, say, a Giannis Antetokounmpo or a Nikola Jokic. That's the only players... That's the only players you trade for giving up this big of a large package. We are not trading our whole future. Like, Lori Morgan's still a young player, too, but that's three prospects for an all-star. I don't know if I want to do that. And it's multiple draft picks as well. Morgan's great. Trust me, I want him. But he's not worth this much. Uh, the Miami Heat, uh, they didn't sign any major, major free, agents, free agents this season. Considering their early trade for Terry Rozier as the equivalent for a major free agent acquisition per Andy Ellisberg. Our free agent move this year was the Terry move. Terry Rozier move. We just decided to do it early. Okay, at this point, the haters just asking to get clowned. Come on, how are you not going to make another move? Your move was Terry Rozier. Dude, Pay Riley's GM resume would be trash if LeBron didn't sign himself to the freaking heat. Yeah, he took an eight seed team, went to the finals. Yeah, fluke, fluke proved to be a fluke run. Dude, the heat are moving backwards. This is this Terry Rozier acquisition was trash. Probably the second worst acquisition or acquisition. How do you say that word? In the last five years by the end, their franchise is cooked. Tyler Kolek, VS Bonnie NBA. He isn't a really being. He isn't really a fan of being compared to T.J. McConnell. I think it's a little lazy. Dude, why's T.J. McConnell getting cooked? Should be honored. So, Paul Tel Aviv is considering signing Patrick Beverly per at Sport and O. Remember when Pat, Pat, Patrick Beverly said to Steph Curry, you had the last five years, the next five years are mine, and now he might be going overseas? He knows it's time. John Wall of the ESPN, I'm not giving up my dreams of going back into the league. Just start a podcast, man. You're not gonna, you're not gonna come back. So let's see. Yeah, that's all the NBA uh, news I want to talk about here uh, in this video. So it's really all I got to talk about here. So till next time, I'll go a lot. Peace.